everybody. I got a real treat for you on the bench today. It is a Cora Galaxy home stereo amplifier. It's all tube type, class A, 50 watts per channel. It runs four 6AS7G tubes on each side in class A, so they're all in parallel. They're driven by a pair of EL84s and the preamp is an ECC83. The original owner brought it to me a couple of days ago. The complaint is the filaments are not lighting on the ECC83s only. The rest of them are lit up. Obviously there's no sound from the amp. So the owner told me the amp worked fine before he moved to his new location. So I thought okay maybe in transit something popped loose off of the board. I removed one of the ECC83s and I actually measured the voltage on pins 9, 4, and 5, I'm only getting about 3 volts AC. Looking down next to the tube socket, I see this is on a printed circuit board. So obviously if all these other ones are lit and they're on the same circuit board, something is interrupting the filament voltage getting to those two sockets. So let's take it apart and see what we find. So gaining access to the circuit boards on the Cora wasn't bad at all. There's three of these hex head screws on each side of the lid. Take them out and that lid comes right off. Then the first thing I spotted was these strings of resistors and you can see signs of overheating. So more than likely we've got some bad connections here and I bet you we have bad connections on the PCB mount tube sockets. Let's get in a little closer and inspect it. So when I see this evidence of heat damage, first thing I do is just see if the components will rock. See that lead there? She's moving in the solder connection. This one, you can actually see that resistor is loose. So more than likely that's what's killing the filaments to both of these tubes. It was just a coincidence that this problem happened after he moved it. So I can take an inspection mirror, looking underneath, I can see all those connections are gray and pitted. So these boards are going to have to come up so I can inspect the foils and see how repairable this situation is. Luckily all the lead lengths are long enough I was able to flip the board up on its side. You can see a lot of heat damage here. Okay, let me get my magnifying glass maybe you can see right through that. So if you look really close, you'll see that these four connections are all tied together. There's a trace between all of them. It's really overheated. And on this side, just these two are tied together. So what I'm going to do, we'll start on one side. I'm going to desolder it, clean things up, add the 22 gauge wiring across the connection and resolder. Once that side's secure, I'll move over here and do the same thing. Adding the wire underneath should take care of this problem pretty much permanently. So the easiest way to repair these overheated connections is to remove the old solder. You can use solder wick. Then I'm going to take some bare 22 gauge wire. I'm going to scrape off this baked area so I can see the copper. I'm going to wrap this wire around the leads and let it lay on the copper and flow solder in between. This dark area will scrape right off and you'll see the exposed copper. Just don't be too aggressive, you don't want to damage the foil. And then the new piece of wire will go around this guy, this guy, and wrap around this lead. So now you'll have a wire runner on each side rather than just relying on these fragile foil traces. Alright, I have one side repaired. You can see the 22 gauge wire that I wrapped and let it lay across the traces. Now I'm on this side and I noticed that this trace actually is broken. So there is some pretty extreme heat damage. So there is no way to simply re-solder this guys. You have to install the jumper. Alright, one side complete. I'm going to clean off this rosin residue, inspect the board, and then we'll move over to the other channel. Okay, here's the other channel. 
exact type of damage to the foils and yes I also had a cracked trace which would lift so both sides failed the same way okay I got the amp powered up I turned off the lights I still was not able to see the filaments of the ECC 83's on but they are warm so those resistors are reducing film voltage I'm sure to reduce hum so I have an audio generator hooked up we got some dummy load resistors connected and I got my scope over here so I can see the channel is working I can't crank it up because this is a 50 watt amp and I put a 1 watt resistor on there just to make sure I have output I need to check the other channel but I'm sure all is well all right, I've moved my test over to the other channel. Same setup. I have no output. So there's still something wrong with that channel. Right channel is good. Left channel is not. Bummer. Well, this amp has taken me down that virtual rabbit hole. I do not have any schematics or service information on it. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should get on the web and see what I can find. And the only thing that I could find was a product review. It talked about the amp, it listed the tubes, and guess what? The preamp tubes are not ECC83s. This is actually a 12AX7. The stock tubes were 6922s, which cross over to ECC88. The filament voltage on these boards applies the power across pins four and five. There's no center tap like there is on a 12AX7 going to pin 9. The stock tubes are 6.3 volts AC across pins 4 and 5, whereas the 12AX7 is 12 volts. So that's probably why we have the gain issues that I'm seeing. So I'm going to stop this repair at this point, get the right tubes, install them, and we'll go from there in part 2 of the Cora Amplifier Repair. Mm -hmm.